Hello everybody and today I want to talk about the Netgear 16 port PoE Plus switch. This is a completely silent rack or desk mounted switch that delivers 183 watts of power. If you're interested in this device, please stay tuned and watch the rest of this video. And of course, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and click that notifications icon as it really does help support the channel. So recently I had a couple of power outages at the house and despite being on a UPS, my PoE switch decided to stop working. I've had this switch for a while now and despite being a really low cost device, it's worked well for me, at least until recently. As this switch powers my cameras as well as several of my access points, I needed a replacement pretty quick. And I wanted it to be a gigabit switch, I wanted it to be silent, and I wanted to have more ports because the one I was using was getting pretty full, so I wanted something that's got more, a little bit more expandability. Looking around on Amazon, I looked at a number of devices and ran across this Netgear. Now, I've never really been a big, huge fan of Netgear products, but the specs on this device was really tough to beat for the price, and it was completely fanless. There's a lot of devices out there that are silent, but not very many of them that put out this much power. Going over the specs of this thing, this is a 16 port gigabit PoE plus switch with a max output of 30 watts per any one port. As there's only 183 watts of power budget from the power supply, you obviously can't use all 16 ports at full power, but most devices don't use anywhere near that. With uh, things like access points using about six to seven watts and IP cameras using about on the average of eight to 10 watts. The unit allocates power in ascending order starting from point one, so it is possible that you run out of power before you run out of ports depending on the devices you're using. There's a warning light that comes up to let you know when there's less than seven watts available on the switch, so it'll kind of help you keep uh, an eye on things. So if you start putting too much stuff in there, it'll let you know. The quality of the build of the switch is extremely good with all metal construction. The smaller size of the device is sort of an advantage when if you're putting it on a shelf or a desktop. But, you know, when it comes to rack mounting, I kind of like the full-size devices. It just seemed to fit and look a little better. But that's strictly personal preference. So let's take a look at the hardware itself. Obviously, you get the device itself. You get this huge power supply. Comes with a rack mount kit. And, of course, all the screws to go with it. A power cord. And then the switch itself. So if we look at the back, we'll see a power selector switch that's actually under this cover. If we remove this cover, there'll be a toggle switch that we can actually limit the amount of power that goes into the switch. Now this is useful for a couple of purposes. One is for if you obviously have a smaller power supply and you want to limit it, but also even if you have the larger power supply, you can limit how much power goes to the device for protection. As you can see from the label on the power supply, this has a variable input voltage of 100 to 240 volts, so it can be used almost anywhere in the world. And it has an output voltage of 54 volts at 3.7 amps for a total of 200 watts. Of course, the device itself is limiting the, the power to 183 watts. So in summary, I've been pretty impressed with this switch. I've been running it for the last couple of weeks under varying loads, and it's lived up to my expectations. Currently it's powering two IP cameras and three access points as well as a cloud key controller for about 40 to 45 watts of power consumption. That leaves me significant power budget and a lot of extra ports to deal with for future expansion. The look is a little unconventional, but you'll probably get used to it. And it does rack mount pretty nicely and it's small enough that you can put it on a tabletop or a shelf. Anyway, that's about it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you haven't already done so, please don't forget to subscribe and click that notifications icon so you'll be notified of any future content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.